Hello students, welcome to the class on twinning and folding of embryonic disc. So what are twins? When two uh, individuals are born uh, at the same time. So there are two scenarios here. One is dizygotic or fraternal twins and other is monozygotic or maternal twins. So what are dizygotic twins? Two ova are shed simultaneously. Each is fertilized by the spermatozoa and develops normally. So this is the more common scenario and each of the uh, fetus uh, has got a independent genetic constitution and they may not be of the same sex. So this is the common scenario that two ova are shed and they are fertilized by two spermatozoa and each develops like normally. So the scenario here is bichorionic, biamniotic as shown in the figure. Each or each fetus has got a separate amniotic cavity and has got a separate chorion. So this is the common case with twinning. But monozygotic twins are also there. So they are formed from a single fertilized ovum. And since they are formed from a single fertilized ovum, they have the same genetic constitution and sex. So there are three scenarios here. In 25% of the cases, the scenario is bichorionic, biamniotic as in fraternal twins. Now remember there was a two cell stage after fertilization. Now if each of the two cells, they develop individually into a separate individual. So each uh, cell for each of the two cells separates and develops independently into an individual. So this is there in 25% of the cases. This scenario is there and the uh, twins are called bichorionic, biamniotic as in case of fraternal twins. The second scenario is that in the blastocyst, instead of one inner cell mass, two inner cell mass may arise. So since two inner cell masses are there, there are separate amniotic cavities for each of the twins but the chorion is common. So the scenario here is monochorionic biamniotic and this is the most common type of uh, maternal tw uh, twin scenario and this is 70 to 75 percent of the cases the maternal twins are uh, monochorionic biamniotic. So instead of one inner cell mass in 70 to 75 percent case of maternal twins two inner cell masses are formed. So there is a uh, separate amniotic cavity but common chorion for the twins. Third scenario is that inner cell mass is one only but it splits into two. So this is in one to two percent cases. So inner cell mass is one so there is a common amniotic cavity for both the twins. So that you can make out here common amniotic cavity for both the twins and common chorion. So this scenario here is monochorionic, monoamniotic. Two separate embryonic discs are formed from one inner cell mass which splits into two. So students explain how fraternal twins are formed and all the three scenarios of how maternal twins are formed if you get a note on twinning. Now we come to folding of embryonic disc. This diagram we have done earlier formation of extra embryonic mesoderm and extra embryonic coelom. With the formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm and coelom, the yolk sac becomes smaller and now is lined by cuboidal cells and it is now called the secondary yolk sac. Now the head and tail ends they want to stay close to each other but the embryonic disc wants to increase in size. This causes the disc to bulge upwards into the amniotic cavity. So you can see the bulge here that is due to the increase in size of the embryonic disc but the head end here and tail end they tend to stay at their original position. So with further enlargement, the disc becomes folded upon itself. So now you can make out the disc is folding upon itself. And instead of head and tail ends, now we have got the head fold and tail fold. With the formation of tail fold, the connecting stalk, you can make out, it now moves to the ventral aspect of the embryo. So as the folding continues, part of yolk sac becomes enclosed within the embryo. So you can make out this yellow structure. So a tube is formed within the embryo. So this is the head end now, this is the tail end now and this hole is the embryonic disc. So this yellow portion is the tube which is formed inside the embryo, tube of yolk sac formed within the embryo. This is called the primitive gut. The part of gut cranial to communication with the original yolk sac is called the foregut. The part in communication with the yolk sac is the uh, mid gut and the part caudal is the hind gut. So the original yolk sac now becomes very much small in size and now it is called definitive yolk sac. 
and the communication with this gut tube it is called the vitello intestinal duct so this is the vitello intestinal duct and these are the this is the remnant of the yolk sac which is now called definitive yolk sac this vitello intestinal duct ultimately disappears so the yolk sac which was primary became secondary and then it becomes definitive yolk sac the narrow channel connecting it to the gut tube is called vitello intestinal duct it disappears the tube of amnion so this is the amnion here the tube of amnion and the structures within it constitute the umbilical cord so these structures constitute the umbilical cord now what are the contents of the umbilical cord so you can make out here the vitello intestinal duct and remnants of yolk sac extra embryonic mesoderm is there here in this part and this part and this extra embryonic mesoderm becomes the wartons jelly it protects the blood vessels so what are the blood vessels two arteries and veins two veins later right vein disappears so only the left vein is left so three vessels remain two arteries uh, umbilical arteries and the left umbilical vein a small part of extra embryonic coelom so you can make out a small part of extra embryonic coelom so these are the contents of the umbilical cord at term the length of the umbilical cord is around 50 cm and diameter is 2 cm so this was about the folding of the embryonic disc the significance of folding of the embryonic disc is that yolk sac contributes to a tube and that tube is called the primitive gut within the embryo so this is a cartoon i have drawn the two twins have been named as copy and paste so this is good for fun purposes so thank you for your patient hearing and uh, this completes students the series of lectures on general embryology uh, you read the notes and you correlate with the videos and i am sure you will be able to understand the uh, con uh, the concepts of general embryology so thank you and bye bye